Real estate is about freedom, choice freedom, time freedom, and money freedom, and the impact you can make with that freedom. But it doesn't come without cost. Your freedom takes work. That's why Neil Timmons brings together the tools you need to build your real estate legacy, from tips and tricks to interviews with industry titans. It's all here in one place. Real grit. Let's get to it. What if I told you you can make 20 times the return of a single family fix and flip on your next big deal? Well, it's actually possible. It's possible inside the world of commercial real estate. Say, I'm inviting you to this free challenge. It starts August 15th. It's totally free. It's a five-day challenge where I'm going to take you and deep dive into the world of commercial real estate, more specifically, capital multiplier properties, what that is, how we identify them. I'm going to show you how to identify them, how to evaluate them, and how to lock them up risk-free. I'm going to give you all the paperwork to do it. It's totally free. You can sign up to join us at www.20xprofitchallenge.com forward slash real grit. That's www.20xprofitchallenge.com forward slash real grit. And I'll see you in the challenge. Right up, Bronson Hill. We're going to be talking about multifamily, how to get into multifamily, how to find deals in multifamily, and how to raise capital. All about multifamily coming right up right now. Bronson Hill. Welcome to Real Grit. I've got Bronson Hill with me. I'm excited to talk to him today about multifamily and real estate. Uh, so you guys are in for a good show today. Bronson, how are you? I'm great, Neil. Great talking with you. Excited to be here. It's a little warmer here in Southern California than it is in Des Moines, Iowa, I imagine. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's always good to talk about real estate. I'm, ex I'm excited to have you on. It's uh, for, for us, the clock just rolled past the new year. So we're, we're looking at 2023 and beyond. So and we've got a unique environment that we're in today we haven't seen in years. So I'm excited to, to talk to somebody with your breadth of experience, specifically on the multifamily side. Talk to me, um, maybe tell me about where you got started. We all started someplace. What was your entry point into real estate? Yeah. So I first, I always knew I wanted to do real estate. I was uh, in my mid twenties. I bought a house uh, in another state I was living in for a job, ended up leaving a couple years later, had it as a, a long-term rental. And uh, I thought over the years, I thought, man, you know, this has worked out pretty well as far as having this uh, single family. And I thought, well, I'd love to do more of those so I could have more cash flow and I could scale my wealth. And so I started buying single family houses in another state and we got to four or five houses and then uh, I just realized what the way I was doing it was a lot of work. And uh, so I basically had, you know, there's a saying when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yeah. Um, I had a, a encounter with a cousin I hadn't seen in a long time. And he said, uh, you know, this sounds like a lot of work. Why don't you do multifamily? And I said, well, I'd love to, but I don't have the money. And he said, you can, you can raise the money. And so I had a great corporate job. I was making over 200K a year, which was great, but I wanted to try to find a way to free up my time. And so I learned about multifamily syndication, which is just a fancy way of saying raising money from other people and going and buying big assets. And so that was four years ago, a little over four years ago. And now we've raised about 30 million to buy 200 million in multifamily assets. Yeah, incredible. Tell me about your first multifamily. What was that? Yeah. So uh, after that conversation with my cousin, uh, I just read every single book I could get on multifamily, tried to learn everything I could. I ended up, a lot of these books started talking about starting a meetup. So I live in a, in a large metro in the Los Angeles area. And so I started a meetup and I uh, approached somebody who ran a meetup and I said, Hey, uh, why don't we start another meetup just on multifamily, not just real estate, but multifamily. And I said, I'll do all the work and you just show up. And she said, that sounds like a great idea. So we had this existing meetup. We had 60 people at the first meeting. And again, I have no multifamily experience. I just have some single family. And at the end of the meeting, a guy comes up and says, Hey, I'd invest in one of your deals. And I was thinking like, well, I don't have any deals, but I, I said, oh, hey, well, let's get some coffee. So I showed him uh, what was like a sample deal of like, hey, here's what a, a sample deal would look like. And he said, yeah, I'd put like 100,000 into that. So I had remembered I'd met somebody else at that same meeting who had a deal in Texas. It was a 225 unit property in Amarillo, Texas. And I basically introduced them. And that became really my first uh, deal and my entry into uh, multifamily. Wow. Tell me about um, starting a, a meetup and how how long had, did you continue that for or is it still in, in existence today? Uh, yeah, it's still in existence. We actually just had it this week. Um, we kind of shut down during COVID. I'm sorry, I got to plug my cable in here real quick. Yeah. Um, but uh, we had it uh, during COVID, we had it virtually. And then we uh, really moved to uh, back in person. So we're having about 65 people and it's running a meetup. A lot of people think it's it's pretty intimidating. It's actually not that 
hard to do. And it's just, there's so much value of just being in the room with amazing people. And when you're just like my story I shared, when you're the person in front of the room, it gives you a lot of credibility. So again, I wasn't an expert in the space, right? I was brand new to like multifamily, but just because I was a leader, right? I was, I was bringing value to that space, just like you're doing with your show, with your, your uh, platform. So it, it, that's really a way I think for a lot of people to try to really learn and grow their own brand is just to try to find a way to add value. And I think in-person meetups are like the easiest thing that most people are not doing. Getting into multifamily, making that bridge from single family to multifamily, what was the biggest challenge? Um, I think, honestly, the biggest challenge is the mindset, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, when I tell people, hey, you know, buying a 100 unit apartment complex is easier than buying a four unit or a 10 unit, right? That, that I believe that's actually an easier process. People look at you like, well, that's crazy. How could that possibly be easier? Yeah. But there's so many reasons for it. You get better management, you have more efficiency when it comes to repairs. Uh, you know, when you're closing on it, it's just a much more efficient process. And again, if you're trying to just add in, you know, one, two, five units at a time, it, it's it's just so much more efficient when you go after a bigger, uh, bigger property. So I think a lot of people think that it's way harder, but a lot of just getting your mind around that. Yes, you know, it does take money to make money, but it doesn't have to be your money, right? right? You can raise the money just like I did. So I think it's something that's absolutely possible. Tell me before I go down the money path with you. Tell me, um, you know, how, how does one go about finding deals? Um, so yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, in, in kind of how you know when when it comes to single family uh, and smaller multifamily, usually less than four units. Usually, I meet people. It's usually a one man show. It's either like maybe a couple, or it's you know it's an individual person who's doing a lot of the work. Maybe there's a, an agent involved. There's a property manager, but it's primarily just one person. When it comes to large multifamily, it's a team sport. So for me, I focus more on the education, uh, on the side of really working with and having calls with investors, trying to figure out what's a good fit for them, You know, looking at the right deals. Uh, I have team members that are great at finding deals, great at, at identifying them. Uh, it's interesting about large multifamily, about 80% of large multifamily deals, they don't really hit the market, right? They go kind of in an off market basis. And the reason for that is that a multifamily broker, they'll be selling this multi-million dollar, 20, 30, $50 million project. They want to make sure that that deal closes. And even the seller wants to make sure it closes. They don't want to go through three, four, five months of a process and then yeah. not be able to actually take it across the finish line. So we have some partners that are just really, really good at finding and net, you know finding deals, networking with brokers. Um, also, we have uh, currently in Jacksonville, Florida, we've got 1,500 units there. And we've got a seller who's been selling a lot of uh, their properties, and we've been very happy to uh, buy from them. So we just try to find a way, you know, we're the only ones at the table. And that is a real advantage as a buyer, because, yeah. you know, you just, you know what, you can kind of dictate terms a lot more than if you're one of 30 offers, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. So you you can, uh, you can go out and buy multifamily with, uh, it doesn't have to be your money, as you said, you can go raise money. So talk to somebody about, uh, maybe, maybe talk about, you know, getting started for somebody who hasn't done one, they want to break in, they want to do a multifamily deal. How do they go out and raise money? Yeah, it's a great question. I think um, really there's there's two ways to to start uh, in multifamily. And everybody I talked to that's in multifamily said, man, I just wish I had started sooner. There's kind of this idea that you have to do single family for five or 10 years, get some experience, whatever, and then go to multifamily. But yeah, I, I just don't think it's true. I think most people do that, but I think you can start and go into multifamily. And there's two ways really typically in. One is either through raising money, which I think is a little bit easier. I had a sales background you know, for 10 years. I was in sales. So I love working with people, getting on the phone with people, trying to help you know, solve problems problems. And then if you're more of an analytical type and you love analyzing deals, maybe you're an engineer or you have a, uh, a background with numbers and you love doing that, people are, that are really good at analyzing and, and finding and, and making sure they get the, get the right deals. Those are usually two ways people go, either raising money or finding deals. Yeah. yeah. And so they go down a path of raising money. Well, what does that look like? I mean, just, just to start, meet up the best place to start, working a friends and family network. And what do you say to these people? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Um, we have a, a group called Kingdom REI, which is a faith-based group of entrepreneurs that we're teaching to do uh, mm -hmm. real estate. And so I'm, I'm a coach there, I'm helping people to raise money. And so if somebody is looking to raise money, typically, you know, step one is you um, basically get your list together of friends and family that you can start emailing and mm -hmm. they will open and receive your emails, right? That they know, like, and trust you. Right. Maybe they don't know, like, and trust you in real estate, but they know, like, and trust you in general, right? Yes. So you're uh, compiling a list of at least a hundred people. 
And then you start emailing them about, you know, why you like multifamily or why you like a certain type of investing and you keep, uh, and then you give them a, a, a chance to call you. You put your schedule on there, if they can set up a call or you put your number, Hey, please give me a call. Let's talk about this. If you're interested and people will reach out. A lot of times people don't reach out right away. Actually, my first investor was the guy at the meetup, but I, I actually had calls with 62 different friends and family members and zero invested, right? So not to reinvest right away, yeah. but the more you do something now, I'd say probably 10 of those people have invested. So everybody, you know, you have to look at it from a kind of a long-term approach that it's not like, Hey, I'm just going to try this and see how it goes. It's like, no, I really want to commit to this because, uh, growing, you know, I was able to 20 X my net worth over a four year period. Right. Yeah. So being yeah. able to scale up wealth, um, is, is very valuable for people that you're working with as well as yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So 2022 looked very different than 2021, right? Interest rates doubled. The the whole economic environment looks very different. And we're sitting here the first week of January of 23. Looking forward, it, uh, it looks a lot like last year, right? A little bumpiness um, moving forward, or maybe perhaps a lot. Who knows, right? But what, you know, in, in your crystal ball, what does multifamily look like this year and moving forward for you? Yeah. So I, I, I personally think it's a great time to buy multifamily, not just because I'm in it. I think in general, if you look at kind of the overarching economics, right? The, the macroeconomics is you have investing and then you've got real estate and people that weren't paying attention to the finance and macroeconomics, they, they, a lot of people got destroyed in 2008, 2009. So I think macroeconomics is very important. And that's just a fancy way of saying what's going on in the economy, what's going on in the world. Well, right now, um, you know, we know there was about a 40% increase in the money supply over a two-year period between 2022 or 2020 and 2022. And Bloomberg came out with an article recently that said that uh, money that Americans have in bank accounts is just over $5 trillion. The highest they've ever had before was about $1.2 trillion, which was in 2020. So over a two-year period, two, three-year period, we've had almost a four or five X increase in just money sitting in banks. And this is a really interesting time that's happening because inflation is... Some say 7% officially. I think it's more like 15% if you look at actual costs. So people have a, a cost to hold it. But what's happened is because interest rates have risen, a lot of investors are more scared to buy. They're more scared to move forward on stuff. But what's going to happen, um, I think in the next 3 to 6, 12 months, rates are going to begin to stabilize. And because of recession or something else, they're going to start to lower rates again. And when that happens, a lot of this money on the sidelines is going to flood into multifamily and the valuations are going to go up. And we have a product really that has... Uh, incredible demand. They say they're we're short uh, between three and eight million apartment units in the U.S. There's some studies that have come out have said that. So I'm actually really bullish on just getting into assets such as multifamily right now because I think uh, when interest rates start to stabilize, I think this stuff is really going to you know the floodgates are going to open as far as investment into it. Yeah, tell me what your team looks like, and or maybe a better question would be a team when they when you're taking a deal down. Yeah, yeah. So we have, um, so I have, I have a couple partners that are more on the operations side. I am involved in the operations as well, but um, I have one of my partners has 28 years of experience and 13,000 units. Mm -hmm. And so to be honest, you know, I, I don't have years and years of experience of operating and running multifamily assets, right? And that's not necessarily my strength or my goal, but I've got a team member who's, you know, when you have that much experience, you can smell a problem before it happens. I'm sure like in your business, you know, you know, when you have an issue that comes up or you're buying a property, you just, you know, you can even see it before it even happens. Mm -hmm. And so that's been awesome. And then we have uh, another one of my partners that lives in Florida that's on site regularly. We actually have a full-time asset manager now because we have about 1500 units. So just making sure, you know, really managing the property managers, right? Because again, you, yeah. Uh, you know, you're not, we're not doing the day-to-day -day management of these right. property. You know, we have property managers, we've got leasing agents, we've got maintenance people. And then even the property managers have regional people watching them. But, but our job as asset managers is to really critique the expenses. You know, a lot of times people that run properties, they don't. And if you've ever had a property manager, you know, this is true on any size property, mm -hmm. they don't run them like owners, right? They'll, they'll Sorry. spend too much in certain things. They don't manage certain things. Well, they, they, the places, you know, maybe, you know, a house is vacant for too long or apartments vacant for too long. So we're trying to really make sure that just everything is running on a financial level so we can perform for the investors that we said, Hey, we're going to try to do everything we can to get a great return for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. When you see people, you know, when, when, Maybe you've experienced it when when you see others getting into this business, moving into multifamily. You know what kind of things? What 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 are the pitfalls? What should they be mindful of and should be avoiding to be able to you know shortcut, if you will, their way to success? 
Yeah. So I think as an active side, I think, um, I think really both active and passive, the biggest thing is just taking action. You know, if you just simply have a goal in mind, like, Hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to become a multifamily syndicator. I'm going to start raising money. I'm going to find deals. It's just, it's just taking the actions. And if it doesn't work, then you just change your approach, right? You go to this conference, start this meetup. It didn't work. I'm going to try it. Then you just keep changing your approach. Eventually you'll get there. So I think that's the biggest thing is just people don't really decide to do it. They'll kind of dabble and they don't actually say, okay, I'm going to do it. I think one of the big things uh, for active investors is I think going to national conferences, there's a lot of conferences nationally that happen that there's people you meet across the room that are like just phenomenal people. It can happen at a local meetup, but when you go and you've traveled and you paid a thousand dollars to attend a conference or $2,000 or whatever, plus the travel, I mean, it, you get people in the room that are very serious and so that's something I think that really is uh, very underestimated. And then from a passive side, I'm actually writing a book on this now about passive investing. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, one of the biggest things that holds a lot of people back is people um, really, they, they, we don't know what we don't know, right? So pe most people, I'd say about 98% of people that I think should be investing in multifamily syndication uh, really haven't heard of it. They don't know what it is. They feel uncomfortable with it. I used mm -hmm. to be an investment advisor for a few years as well. And I kind of saw that stocks and bonds really are actually incredibly risky. They call them safe traditional investments because Wall Street has done a great job marketing them. Right. But a lot of times um, it's really analysis paralysis that gets in the way of a lot of investors to look at a deal or two and then they just feel uncomfortable. But I think even that can be overcome by going to meetups and conferences mm -hmm. and meeting other passive investors that have been doing this for a long time. Yeah, getting educated and connected with other folks. And as you said, it's a team sport. So the ability to connect right. with other people, right, to uh, to fill in some of those gaps of knowing what a team needs to look like. Yeah. No, that's great. Well, tell me about the uh, the passive side, you know, uh, from so much of this is, I don't want to say guarded, but, uh, you know, unlike Wall Street, we can go online, and just look up whatever. The Dow Jones Industrial Average Day, Southwest Airlines today. It's hard to go and find a whole bunch of opportunities to invest in from a passive standpoint. So for a passive investor, you know, what's their avenue to to find somebody, find an investment opportunity, find an operator that they want to connect with and learn more about and then eventually place a place an investment with? Yeah, in the book I'm writing, I'm actually talking a lot about this and the idea of you've heard it, you know, say that cash is king, mm. but as a passive investor, it's really deal flow is king. Mm -hmm. That if you're not, you know, most of the best deals that are out there, you're not hearing about in a public setting. You're not hearing about just, they're not listed online or on crowdfunding sites, whatever. They're basically right. things you hear about from other investors. And there's a legal reason for that. A lot of these deals cannot be advertised. They can't be shared publicly. Right. So I actually know a guy who's a full-time passive investor has been doing it over 10 years full-time. And he's in 70, over 70 deals passively, which I think is too many, but he, he basically, he oh. spends a lot of his time uh, connecting with other passive investors, other operators, having calls and things like that. And just in my experience, having 1300 one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with investors, yeah. um, people that are really doing well, they're spending a lot of time researching and, and just getting, you know, uh, subscribing to people's deal lists and, and hearing about their deal flow. So we have investors on our deal list as well that we're doing, you know, uh, multifamily. We have an ATM machine fund, which is you know the fifth largest operator of ATMs. We have a car wash deal coming up. We've got other types of things. And so I'm always looking, because I'm a passive investor as well, I'm always looking for things to help me get me closer to the goal. And I think for a lot of passive investors, it's 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 not really fully passive, right? If it's fully passive is you don't do anything. The work right. as a passive investor is you have to find the deal, you got to network, and then you got to analyze it and then choose to invest. And then it's passive, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me uh, 1,300 plus Zoom calls. That's amazing. What's, you know, if you had to say the number one takeaway from talking to 1,300 plus people as investors, them being passive, what is it? Yeah, I think the number one, I've got several, but I think the top yeah. one, I think, is that people that are wealthy, um, that are on the way up, they're always learning. I mean, if you look at, um, and this is in my book as well, it's just they have the value of networking and education. You learn from other people, you mm -hmm. learn from books, people like Mark Cuban and Warren Buffett. Uh, even Bill Gates, um, you go down the list, all these billionaires, they spend some of them two, three hours a day reading books yeah. and, and consuming information. And so uh, even that, they, that it kind of just floors me to that these people that, you know, the average net worth was 2 million, some up to 20, 30 million or higher would take 20, 30 minutes to get on a call with me to learn about our investments. That was for them. It was education for me, which is explaining what we do. But, um, you know, that's, that's what I see from people that there's people that are wealthy and there's people that are wealthy, but they're growing their wealth and they're growing their knowledge. And it's those things really go hand in hand. And so Brian Tracy has this quote 
that if you want to earn more, you have to learn more. And I think that's applicable whether you're an active investor or you're a passive investor, right? It's just learning how to get to the next level. Yeah. Let's do some of them on the final segment, what I call four for impact. Uh, your favorite quote, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. Warren Buffett said it. What about that resonates most with you? Uh, I think when I first heard that quote, I've always been interested in Warren Buffett just because of his success as an investor, but yeah. just the idea of like, that's such a, um, it's a quote I've never really heard anybody else say, right? It's just like the idea of making money while you sleep. I mean, people have used that from Warren Buffett, yeah. but it really gives a good illustration of like, hmm, if I don't go to work or if I were to get injured or if I wanted to travel or if I wanted to do other things, would my business, would I, would I still have enough money to live? Would the money still be coming in? And I think for people that are high earners, my passion is really to try to help them to generate passive streams, right? To where, you know, I had a couple of physicians that uh, I worked with that made uh, over $3 million a year, uh, you know, in, in medicine, which is great for them and for patients. And it's great, but um, they were working 60, 80 hours a week, every week, and it was hard to take time off. And I just, I just really did not envy that they were, you know, that they were working in that way. Right. So the idea is as you make money, if you could put your money into things that, that actually uh, grow your wealth without you having to work for it, it can lead you to a place where you, you will leave your job or you, you can leave your job. Just knowing you can leave your job or your business is incredibly freeing, right? If you know you have enough passive income, oh man, I can at least dictate how I want to work, right? Which I think is really huge. Yeah. What do you think holds most investors back from hitting their personal next level? And um, we'll say, let's go with active investors. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, I mean, Tony Robbins, I'm a big personal development guy and I've yeah. watched that there's been a huge breakthrough as I've committed to personal development, whether it's through goals, I read my goals every morning, I go to goals events, all kinds of things. But he has this saying, he says, it's in the moments of decision that your destiny is shaped, mm. right? It's in your moments of decision. When you actually decide, I'm going to do this. When I decided, okay, I'm going to leave my job within a few years doing this real estate thing full time in multifamily, I did. I was able to leave my great 200K a year job and it took me about three years, right? So I actually made that decision and it happened. And so it's when you actually decide to do it, I think a lot of times we just like, oh, I'm interested in this or I'm dabbling here, or I'm trying this and we get shiny object syndrome, but we actually commit to say, I'm just going to do whatever it takes. Like whatever it is, I'm just going to do whatever it takes. And I know if someone did it and I saw, saw people around me that had done it, I was like, well, they did it. Like, why couldn't I do it? Right. right. Like they don't look yeah. that much smarter than I am. They're not better looking than I am. Right. 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 <laughs> so anyway, so I think it's just making, actually deciding that you're going to do it. Yeah. Outside of real estate, what are you most passionate about? Um, I'm most passionate about, I have a big why for why I'm doing this. I do have some big financial goals. I, I do want to generate a lot of capital. I'm not, you know, I have no shame in that. I, I really want to make a lot of money. Yeah. My big why is I want to give about 90% or more of it away to the cause of ending modern day human slavery in the world. There's actually, uh, people don't realize this, it's kind of shocking. There's 20 to 40 million human slaves today um, in, in a lot of countries of the world. And it's just, it's shocking. Some of the stories that I've heard, there was a story I heard about a girl that was rescued in Greece. And when she was rescued, just with tears in her eyes, she said, well, why didn't you come sooner to the rescuer? And to me, just something in my heart broke, Neil, and just said, you know, this is a cause that's worth living and dying for. And so I'm involved in a cause called Dress Ember, which is raises money to help uh, you know create awareness and fight human trafficking in the world. Uh, it's not commonly talked about. I don't think people have any idea how many, what modern day slavery actually looks like. You think yeah. it's something from 200 years ago and it's, it's, uh, uh, yeah. it just hasn't ended in the world. Yeah. It's more, there's actually more uh, human slaves today than we've ever had in the history of the world. Right. There's people, they just don't realize. And that's why it's important. We, we share this message and, yeah. you know, what's your uh, favorite way to make an impact in the real estate community? Um, I think the biggest thing, um, I actually read a book about this recently. It's by Joe Polish called, um, it's uh, what's in it for them. And it's the idea of networking, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's always keeping that in your mind. What's in it for this person that I'm talking to and just really trying to uh, add value to every conversation. And it's not mm -hmm. just like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, networking people think, Hey, you shake hands and you, you exchange cards and you, you may or may not get lunch or zoom calls that nobody wants to get on. But it, it's really thinking about in that conversation, um, you know, what, is there anybody I can introduce this person to right now? Is there a resource that I can give them right now that can help mm -hmm. them to get to the next level? Because as Zig Ziglar said, you can have everything in life you want mm -hmm. if you just help enough other people get what they want. Right. And I've, yeah. and I've, and I've also, I don't know who said this quote, but it's, it's basically the idea that, you know, people will be loyal to you 
you know, equal to the level of transformation that they've experienced in their relationship with you, right? So if you've helped them to transform, you've helped them to leave a job, you've helped them to grow, you've helped them to change, you know, have a new spiritual awakening, whatever's happened, if, if that's happened because of your impact, then they will be very loyal to you, right? Because, mm-hmm. and, and if, you know, you help them first, they'll be like, well, how can I help you? How can I help and help you with, with what you want? So that's, I think, the biggest uh, thing I try to do to add value in networking situations. No, and speaking of adding value, you know, we launched the Real Grit Vault this year. It's a collection of resources available to, to all of those who are listening. And uh, I understand your contribution to the vault is your e- ebook, right? How to Use Inflation to Your Advantage. Share a little about what the book's about. Yeah, so I wrote this ebook um, as inflation started picking up just you know a few months ago, and and it's um, basically it's fifty two color pages. It just talks about some strategies of using inflation to your advantage. It involves using real estate if you can use debt to buy assets that pay you to hold them. There's a couple advantages there, right? You're buying debt that's typically below the rate of actual inflation. And these assets we know are going to be worth more in five to 10 years from now because of the demand, because they're keep creating more currency and you get to pay it off in future dollars that are worth less, right? So you have so many benefits of that. And that's why um, Andrew Carnegie, you know, hundred years ago said 90% of all millionaires are created, you know, millionaires through, through real estate. I think it's really true. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Um, Anybody can get that totally free www.realgritvault.com. Dot com. I, I thanks for the uh, contribution there. It's terrific. I'm going to read it myself. I love everything in the same vein of of, of what you've written. How to use uh, inflation to your advantage. And I, I couldn't agree more with it. That's terrific. Awesome. Thanks, man. No, it's this is great, man. I love I love talking about this stuff because I think it's something that most people don't really think about, and yet it's yeah. a huge transfer of wealth that's happening right now, and we can be a part of helping others. and And uh, it's a great opportunity. It's an invisible tax, but you certainly can use it to your advantage. Yeah. Yeah. For people, they want to find you, they want to follow you, they want to connect with you, either active investors or passive investors. Where can they go? What should they do? Yeah. So the best place is uh, my website, bronsonequity.com. I've got some resources, free resources there as well. Um, I do have a podcast called The Mailbox Money Show, where it's dedicated to helping passive investors, wealthy individuals reduce taxes potentially to zero uh, to grow their wealth passively. Also on social media, I love connecting with anybody or if somebody's interested in joining us on our deals. We do have some partnerships available for passive investors. Yeah, terrific. Uh, we'll get links below in the show notes for everybody to, to connect up with their Brunson. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. You've got a wonderful story. I love hearing uh, anybody who has made a transition into, into multifamily, into commercial, from uh, from residential, and I, I agree with you. It doesn't. You don't have to pay the price, if you will, on the residential on the single family side. You actually can just go do it. It's largely just a mindset. Yeah, exactly, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to connect up here. I've enjoyed the conversation, man. Thanks, Neil. It's been great being here, man. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. I'm Neil Timmons. For everybody here, real grit. I'm reminding you that real estate requires real grit. See you next time. What if I told you you can make twenty times? the return of a single family fix and flip on your next big deal. Well, it's actually possible. It's possible inside the world of commercial real estate. Say, I'm inviting you to this free challenge. It starts August 15th. It's totally free. It's a five-day challenge where I'm going to take you and deep dive into the world of commercial real estate, more specifically capital multiplier properties, what that is, how we identify them. I'm going to show you how to identify them, how to evaluate them, and how to lock them up risk-free. I'm going to give you all the paperwork to do it. It's totally free. You can sign up to join us at www.20xprofitchallenge.com forward slash real grit. That's www.20xprofitchallenge.com forward slash real grit. And I'll see you in the challenge. If you like our content and want more, you can access it at realgritpodcast.com. You hear it guest after guest. Instinctively, you already know it. But let me call it out. The most expensive action is inaction. The real estate market is full of opportunities. You just need to uncover them. You can build a business that lasts for years, makes monumental impact in the lives of those that you love. It's not just about business, but about the freedom you get because of it. Have you ever heard the saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I believe that partnering is essential. In fact, I partner with hardworking investors all the time. The point is that you can get a lot further with the right partner. Let me say it again, the right partner. If you've ever thought about partnering with anyone or if you have a partner now, I encourage you to download my free partner and profit guide, which includes the top five must answer questions to evaluate a profitable partnership. 
You can find it at www.legacyimpactpartners.com. I'll see you in the next episode.